The broadcast is now starting. All attend mode. Hello and uh, yeah, good afternoon in my case. I'm uh, talking here, I'm sitting here in uh, Berlin, Germany, but probably you're sitting somewhere, somewhere else in the world. Uh, so this is an international webinar. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you listen to this. Um, much appreciate that you're here today and uh, we want to have a look at the markets and uh, the market opening here of the US equity markets especially probably we can uh, find a good trading opportunity today so there's some um, good volatility right now in the markets and uh, this is thanks to the fact that um, it wasn't over well, yeah it was at least uh, uh, nearly overnight so um, it was late in the evening yesterday shortly after US markets closed that uh, the US was um, poised, uh, it was said that they are poised to release a 200 billion China tariff list here. And um, that comes as a surprise since uh, there were some mentionings from uh, Donald Trump before. There wouldn't be any harsh measurements here. Um, but uh, obviously, it's, uh, it's, it's possible that the uh, trade war is escalating to a new um, um, stage here between the US and, and China and they said that chances are high that uh, mark, well, no, no chances are high but look at the European equity markets right now I think they um, 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 talk a very clear uh, language here um, the fact that uh, that we're down more than one percent in the DAX for example is, is uh, obviously good for for um, potential risk off move. And uh, before we start with potential trade steps now for the US markets, um, I, I have to inform you here about the uh, risks involved when trading such financial instruments, which are offered by Admiral Markets, um, C CFDs, ETFs, stocks, for example, um, which carry um, a high level of risk, which is probably not suitable for all investors listening to this right now here due to their complex nature. And before entering into an, any agreement or transaction, please read the terms and conditions of the service from Admiral Markets. Um, consult, if necessary, a specialist to ensure that you understand the risks involved in trading and investors should also study carefully the so-called key information documents, the kit, in order to understand the nature, risks, costs, potential gains and losses of margin products offered by Admiral Markets. Um, any for, um, um, information around this topic can um, uh, can be accessed also via an email to Admiral itself, which will then send over those information, key information documents. And um, uh, sure, the question arises why Admiral UK Limited um, right now it's uh, it's even more attractive than it already is. So um, the DAX 30 uh, is usually showing a typical spread of 0 0.8 points during the main trading hours. In fact, right now, it's already one of the most competitive offerings in terms of the DAX Admiral's offering here. Right now, the typical spread is 0 0.5. And this is uh, due to an anniversary gift uh, Admiral is giving to its clients here. Um, the DAX turned 30 at the beginning of the month, around one, one and a half week ago, last week on Monday. And uh, yeah, you as the client get the gift with the 0 0.5 point spread, all commissions included here. So um, in fact, one of the most competitive spread offers ever, I think. I've never heard about a more attractive offering, more competitive offering of the DAX. Just check it out. Check the website from Admiral uh, for further information. And um, the regulatory background is also something to mention here. Admiral Markets is authorized and regulated by the FCA. For further information on this, check the website from Admiral or go directly to the website from the FCA um, here, where you can find Admiral here under this registration number. And uh, here are the contact details. And now, this is me. Let's go over to the three-step intraday trading strategy for the S&P. And the definition of the open range setup, the interesting thing about this is that uh, we already introduced this in the webinar on Monday already. Uh, not only, by the way, only for the S&P, but this is something we want to focus on here. And in fact, we still have five minutes to go um, because the thing is that, that uh, we need to wait. And this is the first step we have to go through here. What, what you all know, if you listen to the webinar on Monday, we have to define the open range between 3.30 to 4.15 p.m., um, Central European time in this case. So it's German time. And um, if you have a look at your watch, you will see that it's right now 4.10. 
um, meaning that we still have five minutes to go based uh, on, on which we can then formulate the, the open range. And I already go through the other steps here because we will switch after going through these steps over to the chart and have a look here at the um, well, markets trading platform and go from there then and really uh, stress test this setup then under real market conditions. So we have to identify the advantage based on the exponential moving average 10 here in a 50 minute time frame. That means nothing more than if we trade above, we only trade the long side, breakouts on the upside here. If we trade below, we only trade the short side. Um, and the third step is that we trade the break of the open range then in direction of the identified advantage. So that said, it means if we break out on the upside, for example, and we trade above here, uh, the exponential moving average 10 on a 50 minute time frame, we go long. If we trade above here, this exponential moving average 10 on a 50 minute time frame and break out on the downside, we don't have a trade, but could potentially adapt the setup. Something we will do if it really happens, then we could adapt it and uh, place a sell limit then. Um, if the market retraces to the breakout level while still trading below the exponential moving average 10 on the 50 minute time frame, and then shorting it against the range. But this is something we'll have a look at if it really happens then. And um, yeah, the stop above respectively below the high low of the range. And um, now you definitely ask for, and where do we take the profit? Something I haven't included here. Um, it's uh, simple. If in fact, it's uh, 9.50 p.m. It's German time. So uh, that means 10 minutes before the Wall Street then, the spot market closes, we take out the trade manually. If it does not, did not um, trigger the stop level here in this case. So it's a, it's a so-called time take profit or time stop if you want, if the initial stop is not reached. So some of you probably wonder, is this really profitable? Um, yes, it is. I will show you that it's really profitable based on a back test for a time span of something like seven, seven and a half years or so. Um, but before we do this, let's jump right into the action here and have a look at uh, the current situation, how it presents itself. Um, so this is, by the way, really interesting. So you can see that uh, currently the Dow Jones here is um, making back most of these losses. 24,600 was the low. Um, and right now it's trading 100 points higher. And why I'm surprised is simple because here I can spot the DAX right now, which is still trading against its lows, the current daily lows. And this is surprising because if US markets come in, um, let's say at least stable, uh, you expect the DAX to profit from it. That the DAX can profit from it is not such a positive sign. Obviously market participants are probably a little, um, unsure whether uh, the impacts here right no, that the tariff discussion the trade war fears probably swept over sweep over then to the european markets rather sooner or later we know that um donald trump has already uh, tweeted several times about um for example the uh, um, um yeah low euro in this case he was um, attacking germany um, in terms of its uh, um, um money spent on uh, the military uh, where military expenses, and low military expenses here, for example, uh, profiting from this and uh, that the DAX presents itself um, 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 lower today is not only due to the trade war fears uh, around US and China, the US and China, but also probably because markets fear that rather soon or later, um, we will see an escalation here between the US and the, the Eurozone too. But we want to focus here, first of all, on this chart. We want to focus here on this trading range. So what do we do already is I prepared um, plenty of of, um, um, of of what we want to focus on here. So what you can see is here is the first candle. This is uh, 3.30. This is the next 15 minute candle. And this is the current one, which will close then at uh, 4.15. So this is German time here and the, um, on the right, um, um, on the right side here and uh, so what, what we can do is or what we can already spot is that obviously we're trading above this blue line which is the exponential moving average 10 which i was referring to in the second step here so we're trading above that that means we will formulate a long setup which means we trade if it happens a break out of this trading range here um on the upside so the current high in this candle um which will close in around 30 seconds um, the high can be found here at 2,782.2 2, 
And um, this said, we will, can click here. This is, by the way, the mini terminal. Um, I will introduce to you a little later on that you can download it as a client from, uh, from Admiral, not only a real client, but um, with a 30 day period also as a demo client. You can download it for free on the website and test it as, again, a retail client. Um, now you can see that this range is uh, set. So here's the high. And um, now we have to see, we want to risk 1% of our equity here. So 1%, okay. And then we place the stop loss here at this level. By the way, I only to make sure that I do not miss the trade. Oh, sorry, what did I do? What did I do? Um, okay, that does make sense. Let me just enter the stop then here and seven, two, seven, seven, two point seven, five point eight in this case. So round it up or there we go. Oh, that was not correct. This is the low then here. Um, so I had to adopt this uh, a little here, in fact. So what did I do just, um, I entered the order, but I stop here at the high. So it's a, in fact, it's slightly higher than that. Um, I could also place it slightly below that, but I rounded it up. The high of this candle uh, is one, the 0 0.18, if, I'm, if I saw that right, 1.5, and I round this up um, to two then in this case. So that's why you can, spot here with a slight difference so there's 0.2 in this case so 7.82.2 and uh, you can spot also here the the stop loss at this level um probably we have to slightly adapt it i made a small mistake here when typing in the order yeah okay perfect so um and this is the stop level and uh, in fact that's it nothing more nothing less than um that's just all we can we can do right here. And uh, if the market breaks out here, what it actually actually does exactly here, um, we're now stopped into the trade. And in fact, that's the setup. And now we can't do anything more than just wait and see. So in fact, now it depends on how the market develops. What we want to get to see is um, the market trading higher from here, sure, because we are long, and um, hopefully not breaking out now on the downside here, showing that this was a fake out on the downside. And at the end of the trading game, we'll just take out the trade at 9.50 um, German time, in this case, 9.50 PM German time from here, um, if we are not stopped out. If we trade somewhere within this trading range, so let's say the market now moves um, straight in our direction, then turns back in the somewhere trading here at 9.50 in the evening, well, we have to take out the trade and just uh, swallow small loss in this case. It's just yeah part of the game. But in fact, that's it. So what you will see right here, follow because more than define the range, define the advantage in this case and trade in the direction of the identified advantage is something more, I can't do more than that. It's, it's only that, and then I have a, um, a clear rule which says when to exit the trade, and that's it. So there's no real action to it or something. It's, it's in fact, it's something really, really boring. Um, and I want to show you why, why this is crucial, in fact. And it's something which is, to some extent probably, completely against uh, human nature. Respectively, it's not only human nature, but it's probably something which is completely against um, against what you sh should usually expect from being a trader. So I think many of you listening to this right now probably think trading is something really exciting, something which is uh, um, making you sweat and, and you're sitting in front of the screen, just can't believe if the market moves your direction or not and, and cheering if it moves your direction or, or um, um, yeah, getting frustrated and if the market moves against you. In fact, um, it's, it's really unspectacular it's really unspectacular and this is one of the main reasons i think that many people probably fail there are some psychology uh, psychological reasons reasons to that it's more or less also loss aversion um something I, I talk about a little later on but it's also uh due to the fact that um they are very very emotional in general in their trading and don't follow uh preset rules but just jump into the action and, and not really knowing what they're doing 
when you know what you're doing and you do this over and over and over again, it, um, what we just did becomes um, an automated process, like driving a car is an automated process. And in, in psychology, you refer to this as something we call uh, trading based on the level of unconscious competence. So it's uh, like you, you just do it. It, it. You don't need to think about it anymore. Um, and it, it, in fact, um, I mean, I have, um, um, it, it, to me, it's, it's great because I can talk about this over and over and over and over again. But the thing is, in fact, that um, some traders out there can't really say why they do what they do, even though it makes perfect sense and is um, something which is highly profitable. Um, while it's definitely necessary to define profitability in trading, something we'll do a little later on. But um, let's come back here to this to this um, slide then again. So we we followed these three steps. So by the way, we don't need to. In fact, we don't need to um, follow the price action on the chart. Even though some of you probably get really excited about see the PNL going up or down, but in fact, just something. I, I really don't care about it anymore. It's just I entered the trade as I did right now, and then I just lean back and 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 see if the market moves in my direction or not. And I know that in the evening, around five five and a half hours from now, I take out the trade again, and that's it. Boom, full stop. If I'm not stopped out, um, um, and and I know that this really works. So the question you now have is, does it really work? Because some of you probably don't believe that because they look at those three steps and they just think, okay, really? I mean, there's only three steps. There's no indicators on your chart. Um, the only colorful, uh, colorful piece you have here is this price letter on the left, which is, by the way, a result out of this great tool, the mini terminal, where you can see, uh, obviously, that it was very, very easy to enter the trade. And by the way, if you click on this right now, um, such a... Um, um, uh, window opens here and you can for example enter a take profit here like saying okay there's a fixed price and then you can enter let's say and let's make it 2800 i will delete it um slightly after that here but now have a look here and the, by the way it's also great to see um what does this mean here in terms of uh risk in euro so and you can you can not only place it that way in a very fast manner, but also trail it that way. Oh, sorry, that was wrong one. That way, so you can move it that way. Great, right? So you can move it in whichever direction you want. And uh, this is a great tool. I highly recommend to you. By the way, now let's just um, delete this again. So it's not that I want to delete this, but I want to here delete this take profit. Did I, did I just delete it, by the way? No? Yes? No? Okay, yes. And uh, no, I didn't. Usually you should, you should be um, take it out, but we can also take it out here. So we can do it that way. Okay, never mind. <laughs> um, so usually it should have deleted it now. Probably that was one one small reason why why it didn't work. But no matter, no 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 worries. And in fact, you can see it. It's very simple to to just um, click the X here, and then you just can take it out. But um, however, the thing is now you wonder probably where to get this from. First of all, so this is the only colorful piece here. And in fact, I I could have for example placed an order here um, too by um, 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 then saying okay. It's not only that I, I place the order here, but I can also, hold on, um, for example, do it that way. So you can see it here, there's the stop loss, there's the, 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 the order. You can place an order thanks to this, um, thanks to this tool here. And now I, I just want to delete this. Click and Okay, um, and now you wonder where to get this, and this is exactly what I want to show to you. Uh, therefore, by the way, here is the Dax birthday, and you get the anniversary gift. Therefore, check the website from Admiral Markets. But what we want to have a look at here is we want to have a look at the, the platforms, and then here the MetaTrader Supreme Edition. It's available, by the way, for the MT5, but also the MT4. Uh, I explain this a little later on. Uh, Christian just asked why it's a, such an odd um, volume. I, I'll explain this to you a little later on. Uh, one second. Um, it's 
uh, yeah, here, it's a free download. That's already what I want to say here, the free download um, of this. And um, there's also um, there the chance to, to learn more about the mini terminal in this case, for example. So there's also a guide you can download here and get more information on. I highly recommend it, especially for those who are trading um, on a discretionary um, um, basis here in this case. So from discretionary perspective, this is a great, great tool because it um, really makes things easier. So the MetaTrader itself is probably, uh, yeah, in, in Germany we call it Altbacken. Um, I, I'm not sure if, if, it's, um, if there's a word in English for this. Let me just see. Probably there is a word for this, which I don't know. So um, one second, please. Yeah, in fact, there is an English word for this. It's Dowdy. <laughs> Altbacken, German, is a Dowdy in English. Okay. So, um, however you put this, um, um, the same is also true for the MT5 to some extent. I mean, there are some um, um, tools you can use in the MT5 which are not available in the MT4, but all in all, it's quite old to some extent. And uh, now the thing is that this mini terminal uh, just upgrades your trading experiences. Um, it by well, it's it's nearly infinite. It's an upgrade to, to to infinite. If you if you see all those tools, for example, there's also another um, window I have already opened here. That's usually something I use um, I use here when presenting the weekly outlook. That's the webinar we'll have on um, um, Friday. Yes, I'm sorry, Friday. Um, it's um, 12 p.m. London time in this case, and um, this is something we call the correlation matrix. And there you can see on a one hour, a one day chart here, for example, the correlation, for example, here we use DGBP USD, which is highly positive. So it means if one asset goes up here, in this case, a currency pair, your USD goes up, you should expect pound sterling to go up as well and the other way around. Um, while this, for example, here, the DAX and the Euro USD is not that positively correlated to each other, which is in fact interesting because this could have been the reason for that, why the DAX had some trouble to really profit from the current gains we see in the US equity markets here. Um, while you usually, um, um, yeah, you say that a rising euro for a, a nation like Germany, which highly depends on its exports, is probably negative um, and the other way around. The interesting thing is that the euro is not presenting itself that strong today. Um, and yeah, that said, it, it, it's difficult to then spot a reason else than uh, the, the reason that it probably has something to do. Oh, I'm sorry, I just I just closed it. I think that wasn't something I planned to do. Let me just let me just um, enter the expert here again. So it's the mini terminal. If you've downloaded it, you can then drag and drop it here that way, and then it's in the chart again. There we go. So and. Um, so uh, um, yeah, it probably has some some something to do with the trade war fears right now, the speculation around this, because else there's no reason, because again, the euro isn't that strong. Um, now I want to answer the question here from Christian. Um, so it's very simple why I entered such an odd um, a lot size here. Uh, that has something to do with the fact that, again, here the minute terminal, that I said I want to enter the trade here, uh, there was a fixed price I can enter. Let's say it's 2,800, for example. Let's use an order which is uh, significantly above the current level. And then there is this, um, this, this uh, uh, um, trade size. And there I said, I want to have a certain percentage of my equity. In this case, I made a small mistake because I entered the stop here at 2,772. Um, this is two points lower than that, but I'm fine with that because the overall risk now is slightly below 1%, which is fine with me. Um, but if you enter 1% here in this case, and then you can place the stop also at the fixed price, let's say 2,780. Oh, I'm sorry, here. That's 20 point stop. And you just enter the order. By the way, yeah, it's a buy stop. Um, you, you place the order. What it does is it calculates this 5.8, as you can see here. Um, it calculates automatically how big the lot size should be so that you, once entering the market at this level here, with placing the stop at 2,780 here, there, um, how big the lot size has to be so that the, um, um, uh, that the overall risk you take on this trade is 1% of your equity based on 
on that. So, which is in fact a great tool because you don't need to run any calculations yourself, but the system, in this case, the mini terminal, does anything for you here around this topic. Um, so now we can delete this order again. So that's the reason why I have such an odd lot size here, 12.4. So, okay, that's it on the S&P. Yeah, now, what did I want to show you? I wanted to show you that this is in fact, and that's one of the reasons why I'm not excited at all, but I only enter the market and then the market decides whether it will give me a profit today or not. I know that this approach is, here again, an example that this is a profitable trading approach. So uh, this is a backtest result um, from the time span between the 15th of November 2010 till the 16th of July 2017. So slightly less than seven years, not seven, seven and a half years, but slightly less than that. But um, yeah, so some of you probably are wondering now, why do I uh, work with a time span here, which ends at 2017? Um, I, I, just love to to uh, share this small anecdote here. So I um, ran a webinar together with another professional trader, purely quantitative, and planned to present my thoughts on the um, um, on the open range breakout. And um, the thing was uh, that there was a problem with the data series uh, I could use. Um, and I, I asked the, the um, um, trader here, I said, well, what would you do here in this case? And he said, there, no problem. I have enough data available. And the great thing is I can program or I programmed this already in Excel and, and we can use this. It's objective. So it's not broker um, uh, um, attached in this case, which is, which is just great. You can use it. And then during the webinar we held together, there was some uh, interaction connect, connection problems at his end. Um, and what I did was when when he opened the chart here, and and he never forwarded me by the way uh, this this um, this Excel file. Don't ask me why, which is just completely forgot it. I don't know. Um, but I took a screenshot of it after he opened it, and then his internet connection um, uh, was was um, uh, went went away, and there was no internet connection anymore from his end. But I could talk over here thanks to this screenshot I took, and this is in fact the screenshot I just present to you here. Um, and then uh, I, I only love to, to share this, this, this small anecdote here. Um, and it gets the job done, by the way. It perfectly illustrates that the strategy is profitable. You can also see here the exponential moving average 10. Um, so the tool he pro programmed here, um, in fact, is uh, capable of running this um, back test here with um, different exponential moving averages in this case. So you could also enter a 15 here, for example, then the result would be slightly different. In fact, it's not significantly different, but it's different enough to say that this is the optimal capital growth based on this um, exponential moving average uh, you, you're getting here, why we choose the exponential moving average 10 here. And what you can see, for example, is the win rate, which is 47%. And you can also see the average profit and the average loss, which comes at, um, out at 1.31 1 to 1. Um, by the way, let me just do the following here. Let me do it that way. So um, we call it the SPX 500 ORB, and uh, we, we want to work with, again, a hit rate of 47%, and then the so-called payoff ratio. Uh, the payoff ratio is defined as the average gain divided by the average loss. And here you get 1.31 1 .1 to 1. So, and then I said profitability in trading. Well, what what does it mean? And that's this is if you if you have a strong belief in that, and it's um, it's about believing. It's it's something you really have to understand. Thinking in probabilities, and that's something you just can't take for granted. It's because um, it's a process to think in expectancy. Um, it's, it's something which is really really difficult, um, mainly due to the fact that there's uh, lots of of um, yeah cognitive biases. Uh, taking um, over, especially when it comes to trading, for example, loss aversion. What you could, for example, say is the following right now, even though it's we are not talking about huge amounts of money, but see the breakout here. And what could I now, what I could I do is I, I could say, hey, great, I just have or the, 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 the trade shows a profit here of something like 20 euros. This is awesome. Um, I just take it 
away from table, cash in the chips here, and then uh, um, um, try to re-enter the market, but can say, hey, I, I already made 20 bucks. Now, the thing is that I'm risking 80 to 90 euros here on this trade. Um, and, and the payoff then means if, if I do this often enough, um, there will be rather soon or later a trade where I won't book a profit, but my trade will show a loss here in this case of 90 euros. And the payoff then will be somewhere in a range to yeah, 0 0.5 to 1, something like that. Um, and uh, with a hit rate of only 47%, you will find out that in the long run, you won't be profitable with this approach. Uh, nevertheless, it's a natural tendency to cash in the chips and do not let the market move in your direction. And this is uh, not because we really can't let winning trades run, but it's more that the pain we feel once the market now moves against us is uh, so much, it's in fact twice as high as the joy we feel when the market moves in our direction. I'll put it differently. So now the market from the profit here of um, in the high, it was something like 25 or so, 25 euros. If it now goes down, let's say to the breakout level, it feels like if we lost. And there's a reason to that. It's called loss aversion. It's a, it's a natural tendency to, to see the trade going back to the break even point. So if you take out the trade here at this dotted line, the green dotted line, well, you're breaking even on the trade. But the fact that the market moved in your direction here for, let's say, 25 euros, um, and then moved back those 25. While you only felt the joy of 25 euros, but feeling twice as the pain feels twice as high when the market comes back, it feels like a 50 euro loss here in this case. And this feels like a loss, even though you're trading, taking out the trade at break even. So at first it doesn't make sense, but you can see it yourself um, um, when, when you're trading. So probably you, you, have, you have faced this several times in your trading already and, and you have wondered what's happening with you. It's, uh, it's your brain playing games with you, let's say. Let's put it that way. So it's, it's in fact, it's a, it's a pure, purely mental game you're playing here. And um, with this in mind, uh, you, you have to understand why it's so important to think in expectancy, even though this is so difficult to achieve, um, because of your nat nature, nat natural uh, tendency to um, yeah underlie those so-called cognitive biases. Um, but now let's come back. Let's come back to the positive expected value in this case. So what we can. Oh, by the way, now probably it's better to to use this. No, we don't use it, need it anymore. In fact, um, it's not necessary. Uh, we wanted to talk about the expected value and how it is defined. It's the average gain multiplied with the hit rate and then we subtract the average loss multiplied with the loss rate. So what we have is in fact the hit rate and we have since uh, the loss and hit rate have to add up to 100%, we also have the loss rate then is 53%. And now what you can do is you can fill in those uh, numbers into the formula of the expected value. You have the average gain, which is 1.31. Remember, average gain. This is this number. You multiply this with 0 0.47 and you subtract one average loss, one, and then you multiply it with 0 0.53. And if you multiply this, uh, or if you if you if you um, calculate this, um, the end result will be 0 0.8, which is bigger zero. And in fact, something I could have added here already. If this number is bigger zero, it means that we are profitable. This is how profitability in trading is defined. It's very interesting. Why, why do I mention this? It's simple because many traders out there say I'm profitable in my trading. But the interesting thing is if you discuss with them, um, you can find out most of the cases. It's not all the time, but it's most of the cases, which means 90% of the cases, if not more. Many just do not know what profitability means. Um, and it's in fact very simple. It's a positive expected value. But this is also something which perfectly illustrates why it does not make sense to say um, I had one or ten winning trades um, and I'm a profitable trader. Because it could be, and this is something uh, which, which is especially true for trading, 
um, if you are trading, do you know that there can be decisions made which are probably not profitable at all? Like, for example, taking out the trade right now, cashing in 10 euros in this case, and you made money. But this does not mean you're profitable because you can calculate that if you do this often enough over a long time span, um, the expected value of this approach won't be positive because then in this case, naturally, if you now cash in the chips, the average gain will drop naturally. So in this case, it means because, or why does it drop? Well, or why does the payoff ratio in this case drop? Because the average gain comes down from 1.31 in this case, uh, in this case, by the way, we can calculate this. So let's do such a calculation. I think this makes the most sense. So if we say that one equals 90 euro, right? So this is our risk here, the average loss. Um, if the market now goes to the stop up level, then one is uh, equals 90 euros. It's close, close to that. Um, but that, don't let's overcomplicate things here. Um, and then you have to multiply 1.31, 1 1.31 with 90, and you get 117.90. 11790. 170, um, so this means that on average, if the market all the time hits your stop level here and you're losing 90 euros, that with this ratio, you're making on average 117.90 euros. So if we now cash in the chips with 10 euros gain, um, you will find out that it's obviously only 10% of what you usually, and below that, by the way, what you should usually expect to make. That's by the way, it's called expected value. And um, so this said, it means that if you now cash in the chips and 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 have, have a gain, um, that means that all in all, you're still not profitable because if you fill in those numbers here then and do not work with 117.90 here anymore, but only with 10, um, that this whole calculation will at the end fail. And you will see that the numbers you will get are um, smaller than zero, means you're unprofitable and not making any money with this. So this said, it means nothing more than you can say if a trading approach is profitable or not by only looking at the result of only one trade. In fact, you can't do this by looking at the result of, let's say, 10 trades or 100 trades, but you need a big sample size of trades here. And in this case, oh, where is it here? In this case, for example, we are looking at over 1,000, 1,347 trades. So a time span of six years in this case. So it's very, very important to run such a calculation and to, to, to show that the approach you're trading here is profitable and this, this trend, this is the next thing. You can't really, a, a statistician, for example, will look at this and say, well, still 1,300 and more trades are still not enough, um, but you need at least 10,000 trades. The thing is that we have to start somewhere and also the data um, um, is probably not available at one point anymore. Uh, and the thing is, this is also a question of belief here. Um, what we believe is that this trend of profitability will continue. Um, and there's always some last resort of uncertainty, let's say. Nevertheless, the chances that this approach will continue um, to be profitable is quite high. And uh, this, this has, for example, um, one reason, because over this time span here, there were so many different trading environments. You can see, for example, um, one second. Oh no. Okay. There's 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 no um, there's there's no clear number now showing how many trades were um, long trades, how many trades were short trades. But um, as a rule of thumb, you should probably um, um, expect the the uh, ratio to be 50 50 50 percent winning uh, um, um, long trades 50 percent short trades there were um all in all different market conditions in terms of uh, trending markets ranging markets and all this the, the more trades you analyze here the higher the chance that this approach will continue to work and in fact this is a practice result for six and a half years here if you know um have a look at this trading approach in general the open range breakout you will find out it's not invented from me or something but in fact it was not even invented but it was discovered by a guy called toby crable already in the 1980s uh 1980s and 
so this approach is already traded now for 30, 35 years and has stood the test of time, let's say. And um, so we are looking at the big, big range of trades here, a huge sample size. And um, again, the great thing about this approach is it's easily duplicable. And um, so even if this trade does not work out, it does not mean that the trade itself or the approach does not work anymore, but it's only one trade out of uh, a huge number of trades. Yeah, and sometimes market conditions favor um, um, this approach, sometimes they don't. Let's just see how this works out or not. Um, we'll have a look at this, let's say next week, why not? I mean, uh, next Wednesday, we'll, we'll have another live trading here. By the way, all those events taking place can be found here under uh, education and their forex and cfd webinars it's not only uh, the events with me by the way and um, in this context the weekly outlook will have here on uh, friday here again this is um, central european summer time so 12 in this case 12 p.m london um, but also as you can see here next monday and then next week on wednesday again the live trading we will have a look at whether this trade today played out or not um, so far, this is definitely not what you want to see, but on the other hand, again, it's part of the game and it happens. It happens more uh, than in 50% of the cases as we've shown here. So with a loss rate of 53%, you should expect to be wrong more often than you're in fact right. And uh, yeah, with this said, I wish you all the best. Happy trading, watch your stops, um, follow the price action. Let's see if it works out or not. I mean, it would be great if it works out because this would then mean I could present myself here as at least someone who, who uh, scored a profit. Um, but nevertheless, it's uh, not that even if, if we fail to score such a profit, that it's not it's, it's unprofitable because as you now learned here, expect value expectancy and profitability um, can only be defined over a quite big sample size of trades here. And uh, that's it for mine. So all the best. Happy trading. What's your stops? Talk to you again on Friday with the weekly market outlook then for the FX, commodities, uh, um, equity markets. I definitely look forward to it. If you have any questions, please shoot over an email to Admiral, which will forward it then to me. And um, yeah, I'm more than happy to answer your questions. All the best. See you on Friday. Take care and bye-bye.